Well, 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 the AB season is over and this episode is going to be a little bit of a look back into how it was all made. My name's Oliver G. This is the Earful Tower and here come the answers to 15 questions about this last season submitted by you guys and answered by me. Let's get into it. So full disclosure on this kind of episode is I always fear that it gets a bit self-indulgent talking about your process and how you did things and uh, I try really to do it very rarely but in this instance I put an awful lot of effort into this season and I thought it'd be nice to turn the microphone over to the listeners. So these 15 questions I put them out to the Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash the Earful Tower. These are the fans of the Earful Tower uh, who make it happen. And I said, what do you want to know? And uh, there were an awful lot of questions, some really short, some really long. I picked 15 good ones. And what's going to happen? You're going to hear the voice of my wife, Lena Norden G. She's going to read them out. I'm going to answer them. The idea there being it's much more fun than me just sitting in a little room by myself talking to myself. So, hello and thank you, Lena. <laughs> hello there. Shall we get into it? Yeah, let's do it. All right. This one is from Paul. How long did it take to choose all 26 letters? Easy one. Uh, like five minutes, 20 minutes. In total? Total, yeah. And then I well, I, I edited it all the time and changed it, but I just sort of sat down and wrote it out pretty Was quick. Was there one that kind of like, okay, now it's just a question for me. Was there one that catapulted everything? Was it like, I definitely want to do... Said for think. Maybe it was more like I I wanted to do Arago and Biev, mm. these two mystery ones and to then start off. Like A, B, oh, might as well do the rest of the alphabet. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think so. All right. Next one from Irene White. Did you have backups in case something went awry? No. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I had written the way I wrote, I wrote it all out on a Google Doc, and then for like some letters, like M especially M, I put four or five things and then as it got closer to it, I sort of picked what felt right. Yeah. I didn't want them to be too, like Arago and Biev, the two first episodes were really... Quite niche. Yeah, they were really too offbeat. And if I did them all really offbeat, I think new people to Paris wouldn't have liked it. So I sort of was feeling the mood as I went. Yeah. So like for M, I did Marais, which is really obvious. Yeah, and that you want to be really inclusive. Yeah, nice one. Okie dokie, uh, the next one is from Carol, and she wonders, what were the challenges with each episode? Chal- well, challenges? <laughs> that's a big question. <laughs> not really. The challenges were getting people to agree to talk. Mm. So for some, I, uh, like, if anything, it wasn't a challenge. It was the opposite. Because on a regular episode, I need to find someone to talk to, and there are a million people in Paris to choose from. Whereas if I've decided I want to talk about Hector Guimard, the architect, there are way fewer than a million people to talk to. So that was way easier. But the challenge was sometimes convincing that right person. And especially with French museums, especially French museums in this season, they often just ignore you and it drove me nuts. (laughs) I'm not going to name any names of museums, but some were really, they just didn't get back, even if you left them voice messages and stuff. So I guess that was the challenge. Mm, yeah. Uh, all right. Moving on to Mark, who wonders, which did you enjoy the most? I think the topic I enjoyed the most was probably the Richelieu Library because I just didn't know anything about it. The yeah. the museum on top with all the fantastic things inside. So discovering that was probably the one I enjoyed the most. Tied with the Provence episode because I spent a week in Provence researching it. And, and that doesn't sound too bad. No. <laughs> same, same with Deauville. Deauville yeah. was really lovely, so that was enjoyable too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Marcel, did the government help, hinder, or get involved? Not really at all. I think, I guess the government runs the museums, I and guess. they were the least helpful. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> they hindered me, if anything. Yeah. I'll give you an example. 
No, I said I wouldn't name anyone, but I'll give a shout out to America. When I went to the Hector Guimard episode, I called the press person of a museum in Chicago and they answered on the spot and I said, oh, I'd love to interview. And they said, yeah, let's do it right now. And that never has ever happened with a French museum for me. So shout out to America. Thank you. Okay. And Helena, Helena wonders, which would you revisit for a fresh angle? Same topic, new angle. Uh... Olympics, because this, uh, with time, the Olympics gets more interesting, whether you love it or hate it. This was like a first glimpse into it, and now so much time has passed. I mean, that was cool because I got to talk to the American ambassador, but uh, I'd revisit it now. You know, the story's going to continually evolve until it's happening. So that would be the easiest one to to, to dodge that question. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Helena. Yeah, and even afterwards, you know. Yeah, no, that's a good one. Uh, Amelia wonders, which was the hardest letter and could you redo the whole A to Z? C. <laughs> the, the hardest one was uh, probably Q, which I did queer. And I even got some um, letters of complaint about that from uh, people who said that word is offensive. Uh, and then there were some people from the same community who recommended I did that letter. So uh, that one... I feel like if I did that one again, that might be one that I'd do again from a different angle uh, if I wanted to please everybody, I guess. But uh, the hardest letter, Q and X. X was, I timed it so that X would be there at Christmas because I knew that would be an easy one. But even with X, there are other options. So um, in terms of redoing, I could easily, and I probably will at some point, I could easily redo the A to Z, the A, B season without even any difficulty whatsoever. I could probably do it three times over. Mm, yeah, you had a few backups for each letter. Yeah. Um, okay, so Catherine wonders, did you have a list of the whole plan? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good, I like a short answer. <laughs> Press wonders, episode that surprised you the most? Um, Jewish Paris. Because I really, that was a cool one. That was a fun one to do because I realized there were a lot of different angles into Jewish Paris and there was a lot to the Jewish quarter and I didn't know where to begin and I didn't just want to interview one person and I didn't just want to do a dry sort of, here's the expert, here's Jewish Paris. And so I went, for those who haven't listened, I went and spent a full day in the Jewish quarter and I interviewed like tour guides, I went to the museums, I went to the... Uh, the museums I'd never been to before, the Holocaust Memorial Place, the falafel spots, and I uh, I went into a synagogue that I didn't even knew, know existed. So that surprised me the most because there was a lot to it that uh, I'd never really scraped the surface of. And bonus, there's a connection to Hector Guimard there. That was so that was surprising me a lot. How many connections there were when I'd be doing one episode, I'd find something we'd learned about before, like a flood marker next to the an Arago marker along the line of the Philip August Wall kind of thing. Uh, that happened. Yeah, it sounds like you really discover rediscovering Paris on a whole new angle thanks to this season. It's quite who'd have exciting. Thought, who'd have thought 14 seasons in? Yeah, exactly. No, but it's cool. A lot of people often ask you if, um, you know, how do you come up with your ideas? And surely you must run out of ideas. But this is kind of proving... Well, I always say to them, if you can't come up with a thousand ideas about Paris straight away, you shouldn't be doing a podcast. Not just that, a thousand people in Paris have at least 10, 10 stories to tell each. So the stories are endless. So that's an easy one. Mm, yeah, that's nice. All right, continuing with our quest. Uh, we have Janet and she wonders, what was the most difficult episode to research? And did you go by what interests you most? Or was there an episode where maybe you would have chosen a different topic, but thought your listeners might like another topic more? If so, what would have been your chosen topic? Yes. <laughs> Short answer for a long question. Yes. Um, I mean, I think... Yeah, so there's a thing I've talked about on the show before. There was a time when I went down under a post office and found an archway, a stone archway that let the Biev River run through the Philip August Wall. And it was so exciting to go down there and find it. But when I shared pictures of it online, I had this revelation that it was way too inside baseball Paris so that I know that the fans of this show and people who like a mystery and that kind of thing, I know that they'd love it. 
But I also know that there are an awful lot of people who listen and follow who maybe have never been to Paris and just want to see some more surface stories. And I'm always conscious of not going too far into that realm, right? So avoiding the arch or knowing when to use the mm. arch and not going too close to it. And so in this case, when it got to the letter E, I, uh, I knew I had to do the Eiffel Tower. Like if you, not necessarily that one, but you have to, like, sometimes you got to do the Eiffel Tower. And sometimes I personally have to do the arch, you know? And so um, every now and again on this season and in every season and every social media post I do, sometimes I'm going to put a big old Eiffel Tower there <laughs> because it's got to be done. So that kind of answers the question, Janet, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. All right, Caitlin. She wonders which episode got the most views, listens, engagement, response. And she also wonders which one is your within little rabbit ears masterpiece. Um, before I tell you the answer to the first one, I got to explain something with statistics here. No matter, like, podcast episodes don't go viral. Like, they might, but... It doesn't really matter. Like, mm. if I had Robert De Niro on the show, I assume that would go viral. Mm. But it kind of doesn't count, you know? So, whatever episode was first, that Arago one, is definitely going to have more views than the Zinc one because it's been out in the world for longer. So, none, there's not really an answer. But on social media, it's way clearer. And the answer would be the Tour d'Argent. Because mm. that little one minute video that I made of it. On just Instagram alone had 400, maybe 450,000 views. And on Facebook, maybe 200, 300,000 views. So that was immense. Um, but the podcast, there is no, there was no viral one. Nothing, you, you, And you can't go by the stats. It just doesn't work like that. It's not like other, uh, I don't know, it's not like other channels or YouTube videos or whatever. They're all, there's a, it's, a, it's a long burn, the slow burn. Mm. And which is my masterpiece? Probably my favorite storytelling moment of the season was K is for Kylie because that was my own story and it's from a live recording I did to a crowd of people from a story that I found and developed and it's like utterly original. Whereas, you know, you couldn't say my visit to the Tour d'Argent was a masterpiece in any stretch of the imagination. So I really like that one mm. uh, about Kylie. And, you know, sadly... It's 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 not one of the Eiffel Towery kind of ones. So it there's it's this double thing. It's never gonna go viral, but it builds, you know, the the brand of who I am. Mm -hmm. Well at the same time it's 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 one of the archy ones, you know? Yeah. So it's like uh I don't know. It's it's an interesting little game. I think everybody knows by now that I don't chase the stats, otherwise I'd just do Eiffel Tower every week. But <laughs> but anyway, there you go. All right, Caitlin, I hope that answered your questions. Now on to Nick. He wonders, for the next AB season, are there any letters that you have stumped? That have stumped no, me? hang on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. any letters that have stumped me? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Probably uh, I don't know, X and Q. and Z. No, You know what? I was doing a lot of questions in Patreon each week. I was like, what do you guys think uh, Z is going to be for? And they have so many ideas, mm. like so, like so many good ideas. Mm. Even Z, Z, the, the one of the rarest letters of the alphabet. <laughs> People are like, oh, it's going to be the zoo. There's mm. some zoos in Paris, or it's going to be the Zouave statue where they measure the flood, or you know, the, the ideas just great like, ideas. Famous too. people like Zola. There's and that's just the, le mm. the hard letters. And Q, there are a lot of French words that begin with Q too. So it's not also. Like, you can always cheat. For X, I did Xmas. And I, you know, I thought that was a really, it had nothing to do with Christmas, but it was a really fun episode, too. So nothing's really got me stumped. Um, <laughs> the, the, the thing that's the stumping is, is when you have a letter like M and you've got huge, like, well to weight topics like Montmartre and Marais. Mm. Are too what do you mad. choose? Where do you go? Yeah. yeah. So not really. Easy to repeat and will do. All right. Um,. And now for Denise. She says, would you consider doing an AB season France version? So many possibilities. Yes. That's a great idea. Should do it. I already touched on it a little bit. In fact, I just remembered my original idea for Z because I actually wanted this season to be from January to like June, July. 
And the idea with that was that it would time him with the Paris Marathon for M so that it would be right on. Mm. And I was planning to do the marathon until mm -hmm. I got injured. And then Z would have been for, there's a town in Corsica called Zonzo or Zonzo mm -hmm. or something with, yeah. with two Zs <laughs> in it. And I was like, we'll go down there. It'll be summer and we'll do an episode from there. It's kind of fun. And then uh, I think, I don't know why it took me six months to get this season going. There must have been a reason. So anyway, so I think it would be uh, really easy to do and really fun. The risk, as I said before a couple of times, is when I take this show on the road, the like there are a lot of people I know who only listen to this show for Paris and they think Paris is Paris and the rest of the France, they don't care. And so, and I bet it was, I didn't have a look, but I bet it was the same for when I went to Deauville and Lyon and so on in this season. People typically go, no, 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 I don't like it. So there's a risk in doing that. And I'd have to, maybe if I got a mega sponsor, if Air France came in and said, I'll give you 50,000 doulas do <laughs> to do the ABCs in France, then maybe I'd do it. But as it stands, in a show that's supported by the Patreon members, I will keep doing what people like. Hmm. Nice. Uh, all right, on to Jenny. I'm interested in the logistics of putting an episode together. As, I, as I'm a teacher, I know I could spend several hours to pre prepare one hour of content, especially in researching for my senior classes. Thankfully for me, I could reuse ideas over the years and modify where needed. Do you have to re-record segments? Are there recordings you can't use? How do you get the ideas and how do you research them? How long, on average, does it take you to prepare an episode? And is there much editing to be done? Lots of questions, but interestingly put, and I'm happy to answer <laughs> them, Jenny. Also, pure respect to all the teachers out there, because Lena and I tried to do it for a day, uh, teaching about our children's books. Oh, yeah. woo That <laughs> yeah, was tough. It was fun. It was fun. But yes, full respect. Full respect. So, to answer them quickly... Uh, do you have to re-record segments? Very, very rarely, like almost never. Are there recordings you can't use? Almost never. You've got to be pretty... Uh, with this job, I, I know what I want and I've got to chase it. Um, like almost never, I don't use a recording. How do you get the ideas and how do you research them? Uh, I think we kind of went over that. Usually I've got my finger on the pulse of what's happening in France and Paris and then I seek out the things that I'm interested in that I think you guys will like. And then how long does it take to make an episode and is there a lot of editing? I mean, if you take an example like the um, the Jewish Paris one, that I spent a couple of days, I mean, not full-on days, but I spent a couple of days researching and reaching out to Jewish people that I knew and uh, understanding and learning a little bit before I even started talking, especially with that one where you're talking about something uh you know with it with such a such a history and you want to get it right so i spent a lot of time researching and talking to people and then went out there and literally like it wasn't just a th it's a 30 minute episode but that day i literally went everywhere talked to everybody and um and then putting that together this like an ep this episode we're doing right now would be really easy to edit because it's just two people talking. But those ones where you hear me out on the streets or with three or four different people being interviewed or phone interviews and stuff like that, those ones take an awful lot of time to, to edit. Mm, and even, uh, I'm just thinking about episodes like The Wall. It's not like you just researched that for this specific episode. You've been doing that for years and years mm. and years. Mm. So it's it's kind of, I mean, it just kind of depends a little bit. Well, that's an example of if I go into a building thinking there'll be some wall in there and there isn't, that's 10 minutes of research mm. that never gets used. Mm. Well, there's a word for that, like negative research yeah. or something like that. <laughs> but um, the other thing is... Uh, Eddie G does the almost always does the editing of the episodes and uh, part of it is he listens to it twice so once it's finished he listens to it a whole time over just to add an extra hour onto it and so uh, I mean the editing is going to take at least two hours probably and on a really big job who knows even longer than that so uh, yeah there's a lot that goes into some of these episodes that's why I'm so glad that people listen to them mm. yeah exactly 
And I think we are on to our last question of this episode, and it is from Kim. I'll 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 read this one from Kim. What are some of the uh, alternative topics that you would have liked to have done, or the strong seconds that didn't make the cut? Strong seconds, I'm not going to reveal because I think I will do. I actually thought about it at the end of each episode, saying, you know, what came in second here was this, but then I felt that people might have gone. Oh, that would have been way better. <laughs> so I didn't do it. Yeah. Uh, Don't but, give people an option. <laughs> yeah. But what I think if I were to do this season again, I would put, uh, I'd let people be involved in choosing it, the Patreon members for sure. Mm-hmm. And I'd say here, like first I'd say, what do you think would make a good one for L? And then I'd pick my favorite five and then I think I'd let them vote on it. And so I'd, I'd do it like that. You know, like if there are five that I think are good, and I would be happy to do any of them, then people can make the decision. Uh, but honestly, there were just so many. Like, mm-hmm. you could do the A to Z of famous French people or famous French places. Or food or, yeah. I mean... And what I liked about this season, what I really liked about it, is it wasn't just places or people. Like, sometimes it was people. Mm-hmm. Hector Guimard was in there. Um, uh, there was another person in there. I can't remember who it was. Houseman. Houseman was in there. And then there were um, mysterious rivers that you can't even find. And then there were places outside of France. And there were islands inside of Paris. And then there were like scientific markers and zinc rooftops. They were all so different. But I think they all deserve to have a light shone on them. And in summary, that's what I hope makes this podcast work. It's uh, getting a chance to interview the people and focus on the places that make the city of light shine. So I want to say a big thank you as we round out uh, this season for good and 2023 for good. A big shout out to everybody who listened to this show. A super special big shout out to the Patreon members, patreon.com slash the Earful Tower. Because without you guys, I would have stopped a long time ago. In fact, it was Christmas Day 2017 that I launched the Patreon account and... uh, my first paycheck was 70 US dollars for the month and uh, I thought about throwing in the white towel right then and there but instead I figured there was a chance to make this into something and I'm so glad to say six years later that it was definitely the right choice because now this is a company, it's a career and there are a lot of people involved in it behind the scenes and on the other side of the speakers. So uh, to all of you, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and merci to Lena, my lovely wife and sidekick. Merci beaucoup. Oh, thank you. And to everybody out there in Listener Land, more episodes coming soon and more fun seasons and more of Paris and France. Have a lovely day, week, weekend, and year. Merci beaucoup. And au revoir. <laughs>